Hi, welcome back to Animal Base In Your Face with Scott and Pam. Today we're going to be cooking up some Wright's brand thick cut bacon. This is the applewood. It also comes in hickory smoke. This We just love this bacon. We're going to cook it up in a pot. This is the Dr. Ken Berry hack where he makes bacon chips. We have tested it in the bacon chips like he makes it, uh, cut in half, cut in thirds. We've actually even done full slices and it will cook any way you want. With the full slices, you just have to be a little bit careful to not to tear the bacon up as you turn it. But today we're gonna to cook it in half slices. Makes it perfect for sandwiches or you know anything you wanna make where the pieces are a little longer. Okay, the awesome thing about this, cooking in a pot like this, is there's no splatter. There's no getting burned. The bacon doesn't seem to pop like it does in a skillet. Um, I don't really know why. I think it's because it's kind of cooking in its own fat, like deep frying, but it doesn't pop. It doesn't splatter out all over your stove. That's the best part about this. The cleanup is amazing. Now this is our version 2.0 of the Dr. Ken Berry Bacon Hat. The reason we're doing a 2.0 version is because there was a few steps that we kind of left out in the first version. Um, most people would understand those steps, but there's a few people that are probably new to cooking and they were a little confused and commented. And then there was also a few Karens. So this is for the Karens. And excuse me if your name is Karen, I don't mean you. So. This is a ceramic coated Ninja Foodie Premium Pot. It's 6.5 quarts, comes with a lid. I'll put a, uh, a link in our description on this pot. It's great, it's heavy duty. Um, it, it, I mean, it's solid. This thing cooks well. It's non-stick. The ceramic coating works great, doesn't burn like the stainless steel. We're going to be using some wood utensils here and then we've got our little OG um, bacon grease catcher there and we'll put all this stuff that we use in uh, the description with links to it. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to cut this bacon in half and put it in. Let's get cooking. All right now this is two pounds. It says four pounds because we buy this at Sam's. It actually comes with two of them stuck together. So this is two pounds of bacon. Comes with this nice little resealer, but we cook all of our bacon at once, so we never really reseal it. Lay it on a cutting board. Now you could use scissors and just cut this in half, or just take a good knife and cut it in half. Now, people have commented that, and we've tried this, you can just throw the whole thing in there at one time if you like, and it will start separating as it cooks. But I like to kind of just, you know, separate it a little bit so it kind of free floats a little bit better. And then we're going to turn our stove top on a medium high. Now everyone's going to cook a little bit different to get it going. And just put all these slices in there. And like I said, you could just throw this whole thing in there and as it heats up, it will start to separate. And then I use this little wood paddle, which we got off Amazon, it's really great. And while it's in there, you can actually put this inside there and see, kind of split it like that while it's cooking to help it separate as well. You want to stir this about every three minutes or so. You want to keep the lid on as long as possible because it keeps the heat in and it keeps it cooking quicker but you do want to stir it and flip the bacon that's on the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom so that it all starts cooking. And as the grease from the bacon starts to liquefy, it will start cooking in its own grease. And then it's almost like deep frying bacon, but it's deep frying in its own juices and that's what makes it good and yummy. We've had a people, people comment saying that they deep fry bacon in a, like a little uh, fry daddy, but they're using vegetable oil or seed oil and 
seed oils are not good for you at all. Do your research and you'll soon figure out why. Seed oils are probably the cause of most of the diseases we have in America. So we're going to put that lid on and we're going to let that start heating up. And when it starts browning, we're going to turn the heat down just a little bit. All right, while our bacon's cooking, we're going to go over a few things here. Uh, this is that set I was talking about that we got off Amazon. Um, these are very nice. They're heavyweight. Um, they're, I guess they're coated in some kind of, or just polished. They're really nice and smooth. Uh, Bocalaca brand, I guess is how it's pronounced. <laughs> Bocalaca. Uh, they come with all kinds of different pieces. And that's a 12 piece set. Absolutely love the color of them. I did a lot of research on those and we love them. I mean, look at that spoon. I mean, it's pretty nice. Um, the little holder that they're in, I believe uh, Pam picked up at Hobby Lobby. Yep, Hobby Lobby. It's really nice. Um, now we've got, uh, this is our, I'm not sure how this is pronounced either, OGI. O-G-G-I. O-G, I guess. O-G. O-G. That's stainless steel. This is one gallon. gallon. It comes with the strainer and the airtight lid. And as you can see here, we keep a lot of bacon grease. We use bacon grease for everything in animal-based cooking. But as soon as this bacon is done, We'll let it cool just a hair and then we'll pour it in here. This will catch all the little bacon pieces. Now you can save those if you're going to eat them in the next two or three days. You put them in your refrigerator and you can throw them in scrambled eggs or an omelet. They're great. Uh, if not, you want to discard these because that's what actually makes your bacon grease go bad. Now, when your bacon grease is just like this, it can sit out on the counter for two or three months. Easy. Um, we probably don't ever let it sit out more than a month because we use it so much. But uh, it will it will easily sit out on the counter for two or three months. If it starts to go rancid, you'll be able to smell it really easy. Um, if you kind of are squeamish about that, you can put it in the refrigerator and it probably lasts six months to a year. That stainless steel pot actually comes in a smaller size on Amazon. And we will put that in our description link. All right, so I'm gonna crank this up since it started going. I'm gonna crank it up to high until I start hearing it kind of start to sizzle. And once it starts to brown, when I take the lid off and I start to flip it and it starts to brown on the bottom, then we're gonna turn it back down just a little bit. This usually takes Depending on the, the slices, about 20 minutes. Um, your stove may cook a little bit quicker. Your pot may cook a little quicker. Depending on how often you stir it, how often you take the lid off, the heat's going to escape. And just be forewarned, we've had some people comment that theirs started burning really quick because they had a cheap pot. If you've got one of those cheap, you know, very thin, if it only weighs couple ounces in your hand, feels like a potato chip bag, it's probably going to burn the bacon pretty quick. So you probably want to cook yours on a lot lower temperature. All right, we're going to take the lid off. Watch the steam that comes out so you don't burn yourself, Miss Karen. And you can see in here how it's bubbling. See, it's already starting to make its own grease. That's why you don't have to add any grease to it. And you just want to take your spatula and just turn it just a little bit. Hadn't started really browning yet. There we go. Oh, there's a little bit of brown. It is starting to brown a little bit. Okay. So we're going to turn it down. Back down to a medium high. And put the lid back on. All right, it's been three minutes, so we're gonna stir bacon again. Oh, here it's sizzling. Mm. All right, put 
put that lid back on. It's been three more minutes. Watch that steam. And you can see it's starting to really brown and cooking its own fat. All right. When those pieces are stuck together, you can always just kind of separate them. And all that fat starting to cook down. All right, let's check our bacon again. Bend the hood. Turn it off so you can hear me. See, it's starting to brown. Look at that. Mmm. Remember to flip it and don't stir it. Yeah, just kind of flip it around. Look at that browning. Just get the pieces that aren't quite done down in that crease. Like that. And this doesn't tear your bacon up. A lot of people think it does. You see those little pieces right there? That's not tearing the bacon up. That's just the fat melting and turning into grease. And put the lid back on. Right here is where a lot of people like to take their bacon off, where it's still really soft, just starting to brown on the edges. Now, if you like your bacon this way, you can take it off. But we like ours extra crispy. Yep. Use a tong if you want, but a lot of people like theirs like that, where it's still kind of uh, chewy, and that's great. Take yours off if you like it that way. If not, keep cooking. Probably about another three minutes and we'll be ready. Look at that good stuff cooking in there. All right, we're gonna cook up some breakfast while we're cooking our bacon. We've got some scrambled eggs and cheese. And this is a little bacon, little pieces that the strainer catches I was talking about earlier. We just store those in the refrigerator, and these are great just to kind of... Sprinkle a little bit on your eggs. Yeah, just... These are, these are codes, so they're kind of stuck together, but just kind of sprinkle some in here. We'll chop them up as we cook. But these are great to give flavor to the eggs. And our bacon is almost ready. We're also going to be making some waffles. All right, our bacon is ready, crispy, and done. We're going to go ahead and turn that fire off. Look at that. We like crispy bacon. I'm going to use this one here. It kind of grabs a little better. And has... Drain off a little bit. Yeah. You got some parchment paper. If you uh, don't want to save all your grease, you can use paper towels to drain it. Let that kind of drain off a little bit. Sprinkle around. We're gonna finish taking this out of the pan. Here is our delicious bacon. We like it crispy, just like this. Like I said earlier, if you want yours you know, to be less crispy, pull it out a little sooner. Here's the delicious bacon grease with all the little bits in the bottom. Take our strainer, take the lid off, and you want to use the straining part. And just pour your grease right in here. Tell them what some of the things we use bacon grease for, because a lot of people always ask that question. And here's a little bit, as you can see. As well as what was caught in the strainer. Strains all that out. Then you have clean bacon grease. 
first thing you just pop your airtight lid on there. We use bacon grease for scrambled eggs. We make a bacon grease mayonnaise. Um, we don't buy regular mayonnaise. Uh, there's all kinds of recipes you can find on that. We use bacon grease to cook our, our steaks, steaks sometimes, our yeah. burgers. Pretty much anything that you would use butter for, you can use bacon grease and it gives it a little more flavor. We do use butter a lot too, but we usually, usually cook with the bacon grease and then we'll use the butter as like the okay. topping after it's cooked to give it the buttery flavor. We're also making some waffles. These are carnivore waffles. They're gluten-free, there's no flour in them. They're still cooking. Look at those bad boys. That recipe is on our YouTube channel. Those are amazing. They're actually made with pork rinds. We use pork rinds for flour. So look up that recipe. Those are delicious and they smell wonderful. All right, our waffles are almost done. Our bacon is done. We're gonna turn on our scrambled eggs and we're gonna eat some breakfast. So check us out on Facebook. We have a private group called Animal Based In Your Face Tribe. Also subscribe, hit the little bell at the top so you get all of the notifications of our new videos. Like us, comment things that you like, things that you don't like. We always listen and try to comment to every person. Thank you for watching. Check us out next time. Animal Based In Your Face with Scott and Pam.